It's Godzilla for the Game Boy, which starts out with a menacing sound, and then... ...turns into Happy Godzilla, which sets the stage for the rest of the game, because you're not crushing cities or battling other monsters from space, you're solving puzzles using cute little Godzilla characters. It's a really cool game. The objective of the game is to crush all of the rocks in each level, which then opens up an exit, allowing you to progress through the map and the game. Watch out for nasties, Godzilla can't jump, you can't breathe fire, you just punch them with a giant hand. The levels get challenging quickly and require you to find strategic ways to crush all of the rocks. You can climb on vines, you can hop down from things, but you can't jump, you can't fly, and you're very limited in, in what you actually can do. And that's the challenge in Godzilla for the Game Boy. As it's a visually simple game that doesn't require much in the way of fancy controls, it plays very well on the Game Boy. I'm playing it here using the Game Boy Advance SP. Uh, spec yourself, fool. This thing is filthy. Along the way, you'll encounter numerous friends and enemies of Godzilla, depending on which ridiculous movie you're watching, including Mecha, Godzilla, Rodan, and Ghidra, in much smaller, less terrifying forms. And I went into it expecting something completely different, was shocked and horrified, but then gave the game a chance and really enjoyed it. And Godzilla is actually an odd choice for a lead character in this game, because it has so little to do with him specifically. There's a password system in Godzilla. You can continue if you happen to lose your characters. And it's a forgiving game in that respect, but if you'd like to go for a high score and see if you can really play through the whole thing, then... Well, then it's really hard. But it's also fun to hit levels multiple times and find different ways to play them. Although frequently there really is only one way to get through. At the moment, I'm playing Godzilla using the Game Boy adapter for the GameCube, outputting the audio in stereo. Which is a nice choice because of the excellent music that this game produces. They did a really nice job with the score. That totally captures the feel of this odd, bizarre, cute representation of Godzilla. Now, you see the bad guy that looks like the red monster from the Bugs Bunny cartoons? That's Hydra. You can punch out most of the monsters in this game with your giant fist. Except him. You have to drop rocks on him or crush him with a boulder. Also, you can't punch out King Ghidra. Which is like the pterodactyl from Joust. And flies in when you're taking too long to get rid of you. You can pick up a little thing that freezes time, which is helpful. And during this level, you have to be careful not to fall on the spikes. The game has a nice variety of levels that increase in difficulty quickly. It will constantly keep you on your toes, and if you enjoy puzzle solving, you'll find a lot to love about Godzilla on the Game Boy. It should be noted, it will take multiple tries to get through some levels, because if you destroy a stone that you need to get up on top of another stone, you've then trapped yourself and can't complete the level. It's a tricky game, super cheap, easy to find, playable for the original Game Boy. <laughs> 